Always like to make sure I've taken all the pipes off. Right. Tanker. A whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. Tell me, Princess, when did you last your heart decide? First job, I need to John Deere back. I'll do that without camera. And the next job, fix his cone. So, I have bought a new cone. I thought this one was too big, but this one's too small. And this is the original. Do you know how hard it is to buy a cone from anywhere? This is near it, but is it going to cover it? This is too big. Might be better going too big. Anyway, we're going to drill the holes, get them drilled in both, because let's be honest, I'm probably going to use both at some point in my life. Two pots, two holes. Fingers crossed in the right place. There we go. Oh, there we go. I know it's a pretty big cone. No one's ever said that cone's too big, apart from today. Right, should we get some slurry out? There we go. We're actually going now, which is good. Uh, so the next two to three days, it's just going to be getting that tanker moving the whole time. I'm going to put the paddle on for a little bit, get that moving. And I think we've got plenty to go at. Oh yeah. So that would have bubbled last night. A little bit of a crust here for some reason. Don't know why. It'll start bubbling today about 12 o'clock. So we've got two rings, holds 300,000 gallons. So that is 200,000 gallons, probably just under 200,000, probably 190,000. We're 2,250. Gonna guess about 85 loads we've got to do. So a bit of slurry, calculator. We've got 190,000 gallons, divided by 2,250. Ah, 84.4, that's not a bad guess. So me, Dad and Luke, the deal is, if you're not doing anything, keep this tanker going, keep it going. Oh, the other thing, this first load, not gonna be very aerated, because obviously it's just slurry that's been collected over time. Otherwise, it's bubbling up. See that, that's not a good seal there. We don't wanna see that. It's hard because you've got two couplings. They're different sizes, so you've got to change that all the time. The other couplings over the road. Bit of a nightmare. Worst thing's happening at sea. Talk about a probably copy. That's annoying. Because it's so frothy, it starts to come out of that, and that is exactly what you do not want. So I'll just make sure that we've got a tight seal next time. I'll just organise that a little bit better. You know, we all have these white issues going forward happen to the best of us right after first go ready for second go get some let's get some slurry on grow some grass Just taking that off, 
and there's nothing wrong with that so we put it back on this is the third load and it's frothing again but first load let's didn't have it on right so try again can't really see the leak I'm not going to put the PTO on, on it as much and just see if that doesn't froth it. Maybe it's a bit of newness, but it seems weird. It shouldn't be frothing. But this time, I'm going to take some slurry out. Oh, he says. Oh, come on. You're going to stay up. Put that up. That is very well greased. That's coming from the top end of there. It should be absolutely firing in. So I've got the paddle on, so it makes it. The first few loads are a bit watery because it's just like dairy washing from the parlor. This slurry is some good slurry. Dad thinks it's going to be quite thin. I think it's thicker than he thinks because the consistency is going to be eight. So I'm going to open up a load and then I've got that meeting at 10 o'clock, which I'm going to do. Dad's going to take over and then I'll take over here. We filled up the fourth load. It's filled right to the top. There's no space above the glass side. That's a little bit better. I sucked up a little bit smoother. Hopefully the hole is covered up or I bet Dad will find it when he goes tanking but I could just find it straight away. It's better because you want a car 100% or like 99% full. A car at 80% full, what's the point having a 2,200 gallon tanker? You know, unless you're going on heavy ground where it's a bit wet. I'm happy that we're going fully which is... Right, last load and I'm going to go for some breakfast and get up my meat and then the ginger guy is going to take over. It is Thursday, after the four loads I did on Monday. How many loads have I done since Monday? Yeah, none. I did not. None. The answer is none. So Dad's been tanking every day since. He's done a great job. I've probably done 40. So you've done the 10, the 20, the, not the 15. One up to the golf course, the L shape. You just done the L shape now. I've done over half of that. How much you've got left? Yeah. Well, no, you've, you've shifted loads. The important thing for this, what Reese was saying, is that when you get to the last few loads, you turn it on so it gets a good mix, so you don't get that rubbish at the end. I've changed the settings on my mic, so we're going to try this. Sometimes the audio crackles and it annoys me. At the end of the day, this is great slurry in weather because if you're putting it on, it's not baking on the grass. It's wet and damp, and it'll it'll get the worms going up to the bulk. Yeah, yeah. And where we put a lot of box milk, particularly the after sallowing, how all the crows have moved them up. They've gone looking for worms, and underneath, and they've, they've actually moved them up themselves, and it will break down and go back. Me and Dad had a debate to use a splash yeah. plate on the dribble bar, and I said, oh, should we use a splash plate? But what we decided to do is gear up on the dribble bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we geared up, so we're putting less on an acre, but we're putting it on with the dribble bar, because we think that grass grows better. It's going to be falling a bit like that. It's better with a drill bar, don't we? Yeah, well, he's put it to the roots. And also, Ken from over the road, who everyone knows about Ken, digger Ken. Why doesn't your slurry smell? Because I said, we're not blasting the air with all the ammonia coming off. It's been put down to the roots. You want to see that at the start of this video, we'd already, we, I took the fertiliser spread it off. Dad on yeah. Sunday put seven bags on. That's all we had left. We have ordered some more till. But it's just not here yet, so we're waiting for that to come. But we might as well get this on another day today we should have it done so we finished slurry today dad's done the majority of it everyone knows it's one of my favorite jobs but we've been on a few things well, lately I had a bit of a disaster it. yesterday that you might have seen or you might see in a video coming up but just very disappointed in what yeah dad's been doing a great job we have tested the slurry as well so we can see how much nitrogen we put on we record every single field and how many loads we've put on each field as well all through the year dad's got a sheet haven't you dad and you yeah. just write that all down so it's quite interesting just to see how much slurry you put on, what growth. We don't weigh the grass coming off, we'd love to do it, but the chopper doesn't do it. It's like 10 years old, so it doesn't do it. Yeah. Then there's this uh, went for analysis again, and this is the third analysis we're gonna have had since we put the bubbler on. An average amount, and then we'll just see over the year, what you know, what the sort of slurry we're putting on. We know what the rate per acre. We're going to areas of the field that we normally don't get on in the middle of winter because it yeah, makes yeah. a mess. Yeah. So we're doing it a bit the other way around. We're going to the heavier land and stronger land where you can make a mess with a tanker full of slurry. So we're doing that first now to obviously feed that a little bit better. But where it's a bit softer and a bit mealier and we can travel in the middle of winter, it drains better. Um, we can always top that up later on. Yeah. So um, you, we're thinking about it. The science of it is great. And uh, we're just Size is to, great, you just got to get it on, haven't you? That's yeah, important. Get it on, and also it's all there to reduce costs and makes the yeah. best of the value. Well, of we were just slurry. chatting about this morning, we're going to put less fit on this year ever. We've got a lot of grass growth, it's raining all the time. The sunshine's not been the best the last three weeks, really, has it? No. Glad we got that grass off. Oh, yeah, but 
the grass will come, it just needs that little boost of a 40 units of nitrogen again. A little bit of sulphur going with it this time to get the best use of nitrogen. It's got all the P and K from the slurry, I have to think. Ground is improving every year. With the muck management, yeah, yeah. soil yeah. management it's is gonna, the most important. It's going to prove even more very, very soon. You'll see that video. So yeah, Dad's going on. And then after the breakfast, hopefully, I'm going to be working on something which is very annoying or side pit that I need to do. Got me a little early, but just loves this job. Absolutely eats it. Pottering on. Oh, tyres are right, and, you know, and it only sniffs diesel this. Yeah. It doesn't drink it or gulp it like some of those big chatters. And a little sniff of diesel every other day. The JCB didn't drink that much, uh, all he was saying. <laughs> all he so says. 240 <laughs> litres from the Wirral back. Two, two, days. Day, two days and then the Wirral again, sorry. So it's did 240 litres, two days mowing, two days chedding yeah, but, and carting. Yeah, but you would, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> right, catch up with you after breakfast. Fingers crossed I get some tanking done. <laughs> Probably with these. You don't herd and they follow you. That's full. Well so, Dad has done a cracking job. I'm covered in poo. So we've got this second pit. Again, we need to sort out. He was thinking he wanted to do it, but it's full of muck. And the problem with this pit is that you blow in. The problem with this pit is that you just suck out the thin slurry and the thick never goes. So my plan, you can just see it bubbling now. Oh god. <laughs> that was close. So my plan is to have it on a bubble, maybe even to suck up a little bit in a minute and just blow it out and see if I can get a mix going on. Leave it on for 10 minutes, we've got a few jobs to do. So it's like my own portable bubbler. I don't think you got me, you might even suck a load back and say, well, it's funny, you cut the first load out and come back and bubble again. Yeah. And knock it off. Five minutes. Push the pipe down a bit more. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, on it! So, what we're going to do now is just leave it, I think. Two very Frisian cows. So, I've been blowing for a bit. I'm going to suck a load, blow it back up, and then suck it up, and then I'm going to car. Uh, you, uh, you can see it was properly full. But it just gets really thick, this pit. It's a nightmare of a pit, to be honest. We need to change it. There's a few other jobs, and we've lived with it for X amount of years. I'm sure we can live with it for a few more. What this might or could do with slurry bugs. I reckon slurry bugs could help this. Break it down and make it more of a paste. But it's here, you can't stir this bit. It just drags the liquid up. Um, coming up, so you better get this party started. Let it stir for a little bit longer, then we'll suck it up, and the jobs are good. Sorry. For the next three minutes, for some reason, the audio goes completely rubbish and then goes perfect again. And I don't change the setting at all. I have no idea what it is. So I've bought a brand new GoPro, brand new mic, brand new cables. I'm so sorry. If anyone knows a little bit about audio, they can just help me. That would be amazing. I just have a mic on top. Just email me because I'll get to it a bit better. That would be great. Sorry for this, but it does get better. I promise. The reason why I like the dribble bar, I really do like the dribble bar. Unless it's the big one. Our track it doesn't spin. I think it's the track, to be honest. You're not absolutely tanning the grass leaf. You're getting in the root, like Dad says. It's getting on the ground. So if you go look across there, you can kind of see we spent slurry, obviously. But then look up there. You can't really see where you've gone, and it's going really into the ground. Surely that has got to be good. Look at the regrow. That's what we want. This hasn't had any fertilizer yet. We're still waiting for delivery. A little bit annoying, but I can't do anything about it. I don't know if he's rugged again. At least he's 
on the muck on, we can't do any more than just getting muck on. It's got moisture in the ground, so when the till does come, it should immediately go into it. A full day tanking. It's just... I do hate getting out of this pit. It's a freaking nightmare. It needs to do it. Because as you can see, it was to the limit. Third load, and after every load, I've put it on blow, but it's just getting that corner. I've tried to shift it to the side. Close up. It's doing all right. Probably get one more good load, and then half a load, chuck it back into there, and then be able to tank properly. Load number three, the most awkward for pit seven. At least it's going on though. Still coming. See the fight there. Serious pressure on there, I might have to stop. I don't want to break the pipe. I don't think I'm going to get better than that. Right, turn it off. Done. How much we got in? Fill her back up there. Get the pipe out, this is a nightmare. Yeah, yeah I'll chuck it back. It's really thick. Like I said, the macerator doesn't like it with our pump on this. I don't think the pump's too good. So it needs to be quite consistent and not super thick. Night as well, so. Probably a lot left in here now. Oh, this looks massive empty. Something. Stop it. So this is what is good about the drill bomb. This is what I really like about it. So you see that slurry there? That slurry's gone straight into the soil. And then you see the grass, the leaf, it's still clean, which is amazing. If I wanted to graze on this, I could graze quicker, which is always great. But I'm not gonna graze, we're gonna make grass out of it. So the slurry's got more nitrogen. The only issue, it can come back in the grass. I think last year I learned that. So what I've done this year, or what me and Dad have done this year, we're in first high, or we're in fifth in the box below, which is higher than first. So we're putting it on a higher rate. So technically the slurry's going on a greater area. By the time we've finished, we would have put it on 60 acres. So about 190,000 gallons on 60 acres, which works out if my maps are correct, around the 3,000 gallons per acre mark, which is good all on silage ground and we could probably put it on more to be honest yeah i like drill art it works for us grows more grass better for the environment you can't beat it the slurry in that side thing yeah. compared to this stuff yeah. this is nice black stuff yeah. that's watery stuff not me yeah. the difference is oh yeah second so you have got some, some fibrous stuff then yeah you? no we took it back yeah. again yeah. yeah. well i led to this there's two bit i could either put it on 50 there can eat it slurry so i get to do something like i say this machine the aeration the dribble bar together in my opinion is a great combination so control box master off doesn't need to be on does it bits there but it's just where the pipes in the pipes are just stopping it from just coming out but it's no bother we're empty we're done ready for second cut just needs a third so I'll talk about that, hopefully it'll come soon. Probably could do with some more slurry, really. Put on all the silage ground. How good's that? I need more slurry. Good problem to have. 
that is it. The last load of slurry spread on across. It's just on the 15 acre now, and I can tell that he's really ramped up how quick he's going. Being his second gear, probably 12K, so he's really flying putting the slurry on. Just really thinly, because we're going to graze that field. And that's the joys of the dribble bar, grazing it. So that means, oh, feels good. Fed the ground, the ground's got what it needs. Plus till. Tomorrow, get the rotor spreader on, do a field. Some young stock gonna go on. They can pick through it, put it on very lightly. Guys, that's it. We chopped grass, but more importantly, we fed it back again. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to your YouTube channel. See you next one. Bye. Ginger guy's got the road spreader back on. Every time we put this on, we seem to be fixing something in it. Right, just fit this one. Bit of fettling.